So, so thank you very much for the invite to share with you some of our work looking at uh, uh, looking for biomarkers of post-surgical um, progression in Parkinson's disease. So I'll say we did this and we did that and we found that, and I don't mean me because I haven't worked in a lab in years. Um, so the lab work was really done by uh, all Jupp here with the clinical measurements done by Mike Pullinger uh, and Tom Marjoram uh, and the lab stuff overseen by me and the uh, um, clinical and surgical stuff by Adrian Hanofsky, um, who's also uh, in the audience. Um, so I have no conflicts of interest other than a grant that funded this work. Um, as the first speaker already told us, um, Duprotin's disease is associated with the laying down of a collagen-rich uh, extracellular matrix, and the enzymes capable of remodeling that matrix come from the matrix metalloproteinase family, uh, and they're held in check by a family of inhibitors, the tissue inhibitors uh, of metalloproteinases. Uh, and some years ago, we measured those genes and all of the family members and their relatives um, in Duprotin's tissue at the, the messenger RNA level, and correlated the expression uh, of some of those genes with um, total extension deficit or changes in total uh, extension deficit immediately post-surgery um, through to a, a sort of long post-surgical phase, which we defined as, as recurrence. Uh, and you can see here, oops, you can see here correlations with uh, a preoperative total extension deficit or TED uh, and the, the, the change that we call recurrence. So what we now wanted to ask was, did the circulating levels of those proteases measured by ELISA um, actually correlate with um, uh, uh, this recurrence, uh, and can they act as biomarkers? Uh, and a couple of other sub-questions that I will get to um, in the time, hopefully. Um, so we took 25 patients that underwent fasciectomy, and this is their total extension deficit. Again, you can see that it decreases to a sort of three-month uh, post-operative visit, and that's what you'd expect. They kind of improve. And then over a year or so, you can see that some patients um, have uh, an, an increase in TED. So they, that, that's how we're defining um, recurrence in this instance. Um, so first of all, we wanted to just repeat what we'd shown. So this is measuring gene expression in Duprotin's disease tissue versus um, a carpal tunnel release palmar fascia. And you can see that the genes that we're interested in um, all change significantly between those two groups by QRT-PCR measurement. However, when you measure those proteins in the circulation, you can see that that's not true anymore. So, so that's, the tissue isn't the only source of their production, other than just about for TIMP1, one of the inhibitors, um, which is still slightly higher um, in Dupertin's uh, disease, and that's been um, reported before. Um, we don't see um, so much correlation um, between gene expression and um, uh, this change in total extension deficit as we saw last time, but there are some MMPs for which that still holds true. Nevertheless, we went on to measure um, the circulating level of, of a number of these um, and compare that with these um, uh, measures of, of change in total extension deficit. Um, disappointingly, though the early data look promising, that in the end we don't see a correlation between this sort of post-operative phase, this recurrence, uh, and the expression of any of these uh, markers. However, um, for MMP14, uh, a collagen-degrading enzyme, um, we do see a, a, a correlation um, with preoperative total extension deficit, and that may be telling us something about its uh, role in the disease process, and, and we and others from, from other um, evidence have talked about that before. Um, so we went on uh, hoping to find some, some more from this to do some arrays, um, both of the, the uh, Dupertin's uh, tissue, uh, just a subset, and also um, a carpal tunnel control, um, palmar fascia. And I'm not going to talk about the comparison between those two, but just to say we can correlate the level of a number of genes expressed in the tissue um, in this array um, with um, uh, total extension deficit markers. So here, preoperative um, total extension deficit, a number of genes correlate. Uh, these are just a few, but, but that um, goes to sort of 100 genes correlating um, significantly, um, or indeed with postoperative total extension deficit. So um, in this sort of non-bias screen, we see lots of genes come up that do correlate with a clinical parameter, uh, even though um, we don't know what most of these do in disease. So when we put those genes um, into uh, a package that looks at protein-protein interactions, and this is strings, for the genes that correlate with preoperative TED, you can see uh, a little cluster uh, of G-protein coupled receptors that are actually annotated as olfactory receptors, but are expressed in Dupertin's uh, tissue, and we don't know um, what they do, but they've all been shown to interact with each other, and it's interesting that they uh, all correlate um, with preoperative TED. If you look at the post-operative correlated genes, you see many more uh, uh, proteins that have been shown to interact, and those are protein synthesis proteins, those are uh, FGF um, uh, signaling pathway proteins, and interesting osteocalcin proteins, and that's a, a bone protein that's been shown to regulate glucose metabolism, for example. So these may have some uh, role in the disease process. 
So to summarize, um, we do still see these significant differences in these genes between Dupritin's disease uh, and carpal tunnel, yes. Um, they don't translate into differences in circulating levels other than for TIMP1. We do still see some correlation with clinical parameters and tissue gene expression, but not as strongly as we did in our initial cohort. And we don't see significant correlation between those clinical parameters and plasma levels um, other than for MMP14 and preoperative TED. And, and again, that's a gene that, and a protein that keeps popping up. However, in the array data, we do see uh, an awful lot of uh, very tight correlation. So either these are genes perhaps that are regulated by tension or, reg or, or actually regulate tension, um, potentially, uh, and this may help us uncover pathways involved in either um, the, the, the disease or post-operative recurrence. And we'll search amongst those genes, again, for those that are uh, extracellular and, and we can measure in the circulation to see if those actually um, correspond to biomarkers uh, as well. Um, so there's a few seconds left, so uh, thank you again to the people involved in the work uh, and to the, the grant uh, body. So thank you very much.